Hi, welcome to Splash. I'm Mark the Pond Guy. Today we're going to be talking about predators in your pond. If you've owned a pond for any bit of time, you know that there are predators that come around. We have heron, we have mink, we have bald eagles. There's a lot of air animals that would like to get in and eat your fish. Today we're going to talk about what to do to help reduce that possibility or prevent them from uh, attacking your fish. The very first thing that uh, people uh, think of when they think of predator control for their pond is actually the fake heron. It's our most popular thing that we sell in the store for heron control. A lot of times, a heron will stop by and see the fake heron and will think for a split second, is he real, is he not real? He gets a little closer to the fake heron. The fake heron does nothing to go after him or protect its territory. And so the real heron goes after your fish unaffected by the fake heron. Uh, it does help if you move it around. This particular one actually does move in the wind a little bit. So it's a little more effective than most. But again, not my favorite device for protecting your pond from predators. One of the things that we do when we're building ponds is we create a little fish cave down in the bottom of the pond. If you don't have a fish cave in your pond, you can add one later. This is our medium uh, fish cave that you can add. Uh, you can see it has a little uh, fake rock texture to it, but it has lots of room for fish to swim in and out uh, during the winter months, but also when a predator stops by. Most of the time we're constructing our fish caves with rock and gravel, but if that's not the case, you can always add that. Second line of defense that we do recommend is a device called the Scarecrow. Now the Scarecrow is a motion sensor that uses a nine volt battery, connects to your garden hose. It has a sprinkler on top. So when the heron gets close to your pond, the motion sensor opens up the valve the water squirts the bird. The bird can't figure out what's going on, so he flies back up to your neighbor's roof. When he comes back down again, he gets squirted again with the sprinkler. It makes a little bit of a noise. He gets scared again. He flies back up. He's trying to figure out how to get to the pond without this device hitting him. He can't figure it out because it doesn't activate when he's not uh, right next to it. So a very, very effective device. The issue that we have with the scarecrow is that you do have to winterize it. So in the winter time, we have another device. Now don't laugh an alligator. So a lot of people, wait, I live in Pennsylvania, there's no alligators. The heron that are visiting your pond actually do migrate. So they have seen alligators, they've experienced alligators down south, and so when they come back up and they see the alligator floating around in your pond, they're not going to get close enough to figure out whether he's real or not. The alligator does have little hooks that you can tie it down so he stays in one area in the pond, but he's segmented so that way the body floats around and he looks like he's moving. So our advice to you for predator control in the pond is a scarecrow in the summertime and a floating alligator in the wintertime. Hopefully you find this information helpful and we'll see you soon. 